In this video, we want to find the partial fraction decomposition of a given rational expression. Now, these are types of problems that come up in more advanced mathematics, such as calculus. But in uh, college algebra, this is more of an exercise in solving a system of equations. You could have a system of two variables, three variables, depending on, on the setup. And this, this is the most basic one you can have. So what, so what we want to know here is we have a rational expression, and this was probably obtained by adding two other rational expressions, or maybe three, depending. So the way it works, first of all, we want to make sure that it's a proper expression, rational expression. In other words, the degree of the numerator has to be less than the degree of the denominator. Well, the numerator has an x only. So x to the first, degree 1. The, denom the uh, denominator has an x squared. That's the highest degree term. So that's second degree. So 1 is less than 2. So this, this is OK. So in this particular case, what we want to do now is factor the denominator. We would factor into x minus 1 and x minus 2. And again, this is the most simple case you can have. There's more complicated ones you can have. But this is a case where the denominator factors into linear factors. That's first degree. x minus 1 is first degree. x minus 2 is first degree. And they're not repeated. Now, if I put a square on the x minus 2 or a square on the x minus 1, then it's another case. Similar, but it, but it is different. In this case, what you do is we assume that we added some fraction with denominator some rational expression with denominator x minus 1 and another one with denominator x minus 2. So we do this. We say, okay, this is going to be an x minus 1 here, plus, and the other one would be something over x minus 2. Now, since this is first degree in the denominator, the numerator has to be less than that. So it has to be degree 0. Well, that's going to be a constant. So we just call that a for now. And it's the same thing with the next one. It's first degree, so the numerator has to be lower than that. That should be a constant then. And then the objective then is to solve for a and b. If there was another third factor here, they say the factors down here were, say, say you had an x minus 7, then I would have a plus and I would have a c over x minus 7, and so on. So you could have, like in this case, we have two unknowns. We could have three, three variables, four variables, and that would make it more a little bit more complex, still solving a system. Let's go ahead and cancel these for now. And then I have it set up over here. Okay, those factors form and a over x minus 1, b over x minus 2. We want to solve this. So what I did here then is I multiplied both sides by x minus 1 and x minus 2, which is the lowest common denominator. So if you multiply the left side by x minus 1, x minus 2, then these are going to cancel on this side. These will cancel. You just get an x on the left side. You multiply the right side by x minus 1, x minus 2. The x minus 1 will cancel here, so that would give me an a times x minus 2. And over here on the other one, the x minus 2 will cancel, cancel, and the b will be multiplied by x minus 1. So what we wind up with is this. And we set it up, so this is, a, this is actually an identity. So here's what we'll do. We'll say, okay, this is going to be an x on this side. And there's a couple of several ways to do this, uh, but I want to I want to do it so you have to solve a system. So let's set it up this way. We're going to have uh, here, here's what we have. If I multiply by a, I'm going to have an ax here. Over here, if I multiply this one by b, I'm going to have a bx. So it's ax plus bx. So let's put those together. A plus b then. So it's actually ax plus bx, and all we did here is factor out an x, and then plus. And then what do we have left? So then we'll go this way, and we go this way, multiply this out. So that's going to give us a times a minus 2 is a minus 2a. So let me just do it this way, minus 2a. And then multiplying by b here, that'll give me a minus b. And then look on the, on the other side. On the left side, I have an x to the first. So just remind you, if I have, let's say I have this. Let's say I have an x squared plus 2x. And I have that equal to, say, over here I want to have an a x squared plus bx. I want to find a and b so that these two 
expressions are equal. So you look at the square term over here. What's the coefficient of the square term? Well, this is a 1. On the other side, what is it? It's an a. And we have an x coefficient and the x is 2. Here we have an x coefficient, coefficient is b. So the only way that these two expressions can be equal is a has to be 1. And b has to be whatever the coefficient is on the corresponding side, which is 2. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to look at uh, the left side. That, that's a 1x to the first plus a constant. The constant there is 0. And the coefficient of the x on this side is a plus b. Well, that tells me that a plus b, in order for these to be equal, a plus b has to equal to 1. And then on this side, the, the, the minus 2a minus b is a constant. Now on the other side, we don't have a constant. That means it's 0. So that would tell me that minus 2a minus b has to equal to 0. Now you have a system of two equations with two variables a and b. So you can solve systems by elimination. You can solve them by substitution. I see I have b here and a minus b, so I, I, can, I can see that if I just add these up, the b's are going to cancel. So I'm just going to say a add minus 2a, that's minus a, or minus 1a. b minus b cancels, and 1 and 0 is 1. Multiplying both sides by a negative 1, that would tell me that a has to equal to negative 1. So now I just need b. So I'll come back over here and let's go to the first one. I know that a is negative 1, so let's put a, let's put a negative 1 right here where the a is, okay? So this negative 1 replaces the a. And then I want to solve for b, so I add, negative, I add positive 1 to both sides and I get b is equal to 2. And that's your solution. Those are the, those are the values of a and b that will decompose the rational expressions. So sometimes I'll be asking you for a coefficient, and in this case I'm asking you to write it out. So negative 1 and 2, so let's just clear this. Go up to this one. So all we have to do now is replace the a by negative 1 and the b by 2. So there it is. Negative 1 over x minus 1 plus 2 over x minus 2 is the decomposition of this expression. So in other words, if you take if you take this expression here, that's minus 1 over x minus 1 plus 2 over x minus 2, and find your common denominator, which of course is going to be x minus 1 and x minus 2, and combine, you're going to come up with an x on top. Now these types of problems, these types of problems will occur, like I said, in courses like calculus, what, the, what you'll have, you'll have the problem like this, and it'll ask you to find the integral. This will be a dx here. And it's going to be a lot easier to solve this expression. It's given to you in this format. So that's, that's going to be the, the, the most popular application of this type of problem in calculus, decomposing a rational expression. So it'll make it easier for you to find what is called the uh, the integral of that quantity. So anyway, this in this case, this is the answer. Forget about this. This is just telling you what what what, what it's going to be used for. Okay. So the answer then is the decomposition of this rational expression is given by this. Now I do want to point out one other thing. That's this. I said they have to be. In order for this to to work out, the expression has to be in has to be a, what do we call a proper fraction. So the, the degree of the numerator has to be less than the degree of the denominator. So if you got something like this, and it says, give the partial fraction decomposition of this. So we'll notice here, the degree of the numerator is 3. The degree of the denominator is 2. 3 is larger than 2. So we have to fix it. So if that's, if that's the case, what you do, what you do is you do long division, and you write it out this way. So you take the uh, numerator, that becomes your dividend. So 5x to the third plus 2x. And so we take, have to take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. So the denominator is x squared minus 4. And then you just go x squared goes into 5x to the third 
5x. And then you multiply the 5x times the divisor. So 5x times x squared, this is 5x to the third. And then 5x times the minus 4, that's a minus 20x. And then here you just subtract. So subtract, just say, like your regular long, long division. 5x to the third minus 5x to the third, these will cancel. 2x minus a minus 20x, the, the minus changes to a plus, so this becomes a 22x. And then 0 from minus 1 is minus 1. Now the degree here of the remainder, this is not your remainder, is 1, and over here we have a 2, so there you just stop dividing. And you say the answer is going to be 5x then. We're saying that this expression then, rational expression, is equal to 5x plus we take the remainder, this 22x minus 1, we write that over x squared minus 4. So if they had asked you to find the partial fraction decomposition of this expression, the first thing you'd have to do, because the degree of the numerator is not less than the degree of the denominator, you'd have to divide it out. And you come up with this. Now, this. now this part right here is okay. The 5x is okay. You can leave that the way it is. Then you would take this 22x minus 1 over x squared minus 4 and you would have to go ahead and factor this out into x minus 2 and x plus 2. You have to you have to work that just like the first one, the problem I did. So basically then this expression right here you would say is equal to, because there are first degree factors here and neither one is repeated, you'd set it up in a similar way. You'd have a over x minus 2 plus b over x plus 2. And forget about the 5x for now. You would just work this. You would work this out just this 22 minus 22x minus 1 over x squared minus 4. You'd work that out just like I did the uh, the last problem, and then you find a and b, and then your final answer then would be 5x plus, and then whatever you got for a plus over, over x minus 2, then whatever you got for b over x plus 2, and that would be it. But that's your solution. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.